here to do another kind of film room session. And what I wanted to address today was the maybe the biggest surprise uh, of them all in the Steelers' 24-16 win over the Cincinnati Bengals was the complete shutdown of A.J. Green to one of arguably the worst, maybe second worst game of his career against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Held to just two catches for 38 yards, no touchdowns, no big plays, as quiet as quiet can be. And obviously, I'm sure if you read the site or just watched the game or have seen other analysis of it, um, you you know you know that Ross Cockrell was responsible for a lot of that. And I give him credit. We, you know, we talked, uh, I think, last Saturday, and I said if it was me, I'd probably shadow with William Gay um, because I thought he'd be the most physical guy. But uh, if you were going to play Ross Cockrell on him, you wanted to, to be able to roll him up to the line of scrimmage to mitigate some of the issues of, of physicality that he has with A.J. Green. And I think that's partially what the Steelers did. They did some other things um, with him uh, and, and collectively as a team, as a scheme, to shut down A.J. Green. And we're going to go through a couple of those examples today. It's nothing that's going to totally, I think, blow your mind. It, it's nothing that they wouldn't do against other receivers or what teams do to try to slow down some of the best receivers in the league. Um, but I think it's nice to actually get to see it and see some specific examples of it um, because when you're watching – the the all the the TV tape, excuse me. Um, it's obviously very tough to to kind of tell uh, what's happening off screen. And that's usually where you know things are happening off screen, especially if the wide receiver, as Green was or wasn't, uh, involved in in, in um, Sunday's game. So um, you know we'll we'll start uh, here in the first quarter, and I think it's about five plays that we want to go through, and I'll try to go through them relatively quickly because I don't want to make this video too crazy long. And so we got a third and seven here in the first quarter. And uh, you're going to see the Bengals are going to come out in 11 personnel with a tight end. They're running back in the backfield. And the Steelers are going to run uh, too high safety. And, and they always try to disguise. You try to disguise coverages. And, and quarterbacks are going to look at the safeties first. And so you're going to have Mike Mitchell down here at the bottom where that games is at. And then Sean Davis is going to bail and get to his spot to create that too high look. It just becomes man coverage, um, two-man, basically what you can call it, with the cornerbacks playing trail technique, which is playing to the hip of the receiver, stopping any underneath underneath routes, in-breaking routes, while they get the safety support over the top. So you'll see here, Sean Davis working over the top, getting to his landmark in that two-high shell. There's Mike Mitchell down at the bottom. Cockrell playing to the inside hip of A.J. Green. And they're going to basically just bracket him. There's nowhere to go over the top. There's nowhere to go underneath. You can't go anything in breaking because you're going to have both guys on him. And Andy Dalton forced to try to check it down to the tight end. Slips out of his hand. Jarvis Jones probably actually peeled off uh, on that green dog blitz uh, a little too late. And because that could have been definitely a conversion. Um, we'll take a, a look at that play real, real quick from the end zone angle. But again, you see Davis walking down. And then he's going to bail on the snap. Give that too high look. It's going to force the check down. So we'll run that back one last time. I'll play through and be quiet here. Watch Cockerel top of the screen. And A.J. Green bracketed. Nowhere uh, for Dalton to go uh, to A.J. Green. Our next look here, uh, I believe it's on the next drive. And uh, this is another first and ten play. And we talked about the, the screen game, the wide receiver screen game that the Bengals had last week. And uh, they had done it uh, seven times and averaged over 12 yards per play. And they, I don't think they ran it once or uh, maybe once the whole game. Um, I think that was probably a deliberate effort by the Steelers to uh, to take that away. So, again, first and 10 here. And, and you know, this is what the Steelers would do with Ike Taylor. Um, and Cockrell's not Ike Taylor. I think everyone's clear on that. But the concepts are similar because usually the Steelers are going to be a cover three team. They're going to play the corners with a cushion. And you see down here at the bottom, William Gay is given a nice cushion on the Z receiver. But up to the top, Ross Cockrell here, you know, there's no there's no cushion. Um, we want to be physical with him. We don't want to allow that screen game. Um, you know, we don't want to allow any sort of, you know, ability to get yards after catch. Because Cockrell's not the best tackler in the world, uh, we need to roll him up to the line of scrimmage, which is something I talked about during that stream. If you want to play Cockrell on, on A.J. Green, you got to get close with him because you can't give that space because you don't know if you can trust Cockrell to make that tackle um, in space. And if you don't, you know, you're know you going to get a big gain out of what could be, should be a, a two, three-yard play. So top of the screen here, we'll let it run through. Now it's man coverage. The safety ends up buzzing down. 
So there's no real help here, but you're just getting that that uh, that man coverage. You're you're discouraging uh, the wide receiver screen if if it is going to be there because you never know when it's going to happen. And Dalton goes to the other side to Brandon LaFell. So we'll run through it one last time again. Cocker rolled up on Green, not going to give him any space to work with, and Dalton goes elsewhere with the football. Let's roll to the second quarter now, and we will go to 5:33 or 5:50. What is this? 5:51? I think I can never read my handwriting because I wrote down some of these plays so I could find them easier. But I guess it doesn't help if you can't read your own handwriting. Uh, so here we go. Uh, Bengals backed up here, and uh, this this is one of the few targets of the game that AJ Green got. So now we're just talking about making a play on the football. Uh, you're gonna get, you know, oh, I think I actually might have the wrong play pulled up. <laughs> Again, you have to be able to read your own handwriting because they they threw this back to back to uh, AJ Green. This is the one that I want. 555. Here's Cockrell at the top of the screen. Get not much of a cushion allowed. Now you're going to bail on the snap because you have to protect vertically because you don't know what the route's going to be. So let's go back and look at that real quick again. Now you're going to get that basically press bail technique. Or you're going to give the illusion of press, but right on the snap you're going to open your hips uh, to the field and start protecting yourself vertically because they're running um, cover one, cover three, single high safety. There's Robert Golden coming down you know, to help stop the run. You get that play action look as well. So you're going to protect vertically. And what A.J. Green runs is just basically a little skinny post, uh, the old Bang 8, uh, North Turner, Dallas Cowboys in the 90s with, with uh, Aikman to Irvin. That was kind of their money play. That's what you get here. And uh, so Kako makes a great individual play on the football. And uh, I think the end zone view is going to give, uh, give you a better look at it. Again, single high safety. And, uh, yeah, there's Cockwell right there. It's a little blurry, obviously, but you can see him play the pocket. Get swipe his hand through AJ Green's hand, and uh, make the play break up the football. And while you got Mitchell closing over too, you know that's the, kind of the enforcer that Mike Mitchell is, as he's not going to allow anything over the middle. Again, we'll run this through from the end zone angle. Cockrell just making a play on the football. Sometimes you're, you know you're, they're going to throw at AJ Green a couple times. They're going to get a couple. You know you can't play too high all day. You can take advantage of the opportunity when you get it, and you go ahead and make a play. So we'll look at that one last time here. It's a great play by Cockrell. You get the press uh, look, so you discourage that that wide receiver screen. You're reading the route. You know you got your bail. You got eyes on the quarterback. You know with your peripheral vision. Uh, you read Green's route. Breaks it on the skinny post. You go in there, be physical, break up the football. It's a great play by Ross Cockrell. Uh, no doubt about it. That's not scheme related, really. Uh, that's just a great individual effort. So let me pull up uh, the next play. Hopefully, we'll find it a little quicker, a little easier than we did last time. Again, this is, uh, this is what happens when you're doing a live video. No uh, no editing available. Uh, late in the first half. And uh, again, we're going to see the Steelers in cover two. This is out of their dime package. So this is their two down linemen, three linebackers, six defensive backs with Artie Burns coming in. Artie Burns top of the screen here. You could be on the opposite side of Cockrell all day. William Gay kicks inside. Robert Golden right here becomes the dime defender. Always moves into the box. It's kind of that uh, you know linebacker-ish replacing Timmons role. Sean Davis, Mike Mitchell all up top as you're too high. So you're going to get your straight cover two. You tell cover two. Golden, who's going to be our Mike linebacker here, our Timmons, opening his hips to the field. Which you're going to see there. You get your too high safety look. Cover two. Cornerbacks playing on the outside. Got to force the receivers to the inside. Want to reroute them inside. So it's a nice job by Cockwell, bottom of the screen. Force AJ Green to the help. You're trying to get an inside release if you can. Cut down that space of safety has to make on any sort of vertical pass. So we'll let this run through. I want to just let this go through the whole way. It's a nice job by Cockrell. You're going to force that bracket. Nowhere to go for the football. There's no way Dalton's can make that throw. Ends up hitting the check down underneath William Gay. Makes a great play. Pops the football out. Look at it again. Again, this is straight cover two. Nothing fancy about it. Three-man rush. You're going to get your flat defenders rerouting. And, you know, there's no receiver coming up for, for the flat over here for Burns. Too high shell. Uh, the mic getting depth. We're going to use Tampa 2 drop. 
You got your underneath defenders here playing the hook zones, looking for any crossers. And then you force the underneath throw. That's a great job there. Last one I want to look at, wrap things up. Let's uh, let's fast forward to the fourth quarter. And there's actually, I think, a similar look at it, but just to show kind of how much they ran it all day. You know, because they'll run cover to some, but uh, I bet you anything they ran it a lot more than they will any other game this year because um, it's not a staple for them. Again, they're a base cover three kind of team. But, um, you know, if you want to shut down receivers, if you want to roll coverage, you have to play too high. You really can't roll coverage if you're going to play single high um, just because you can't, you know, declare because it's going to be too hard to disguise it. And then you'll leave everybody else on a literal island and one missed tackle and you give a, bit, a, a big chunk play. So if you want to try to do that bracketing, you got to play too high. It's not what the Steelers do. It's not in the wheelhouse. They like to play single high. They want to you know, roll down Robert Golden into the box, be that great alley filler against the run, put teams in third and long, then you can play your too high. Um, but you have to adjust the game plan a little bit when you want to shut down guys like A.J. Green, especially when you know that Tyler Eifert is out and Green is kind of the one big threat you have to worry about. Now, when Eifert comes back, you're going to have to maybe adjust things because it's harder to do this whenever you have two top weapons to worry about. And we'll see how the emergence of Tyler Boyd is. Obviously, he kind of was the benefactor of this. He got a lot of extra looks um, because Green was, was bottled up. Uh, it's uh, top of the screen here. Let me, like I'm getting ahead of myself, let me roll this back. Again, second and three. Cockrell rolled up a good bit. Top of the screen here. With AJ Green, the broadcast thing gets in the way a little bit. Right underneath the cursor, we'll do it here so you can see it. See it. Going to play cover two again out of their dime. There's Sean Davis. He's bailing, getting to his landmark. They're getting Robert Golden, getting his depth. Nice strong reroute here, top of the screen. You're getting it. You know, you're you're forcing them outside. Sometimes that's just the way the receiver wants to go. You know, it's not always something you can do about it, but you're getting a nice reroute. You're going to get depth. There's no flat defender. So there's Cockrell getting depth, taking that throw away. You can't go underneath. You can't throw the comeback. You can't throw the curl. You can't throw the dig. It's all going to be taken away by the underneath corner. And you can't throw vertically because you have the safety over the, uh, over the top. So what's Dalton to do? You're going to have to force the check down. Now you got zone coverage. Got eyes to the football. Everybody rallies. Gang tackle. You got three, four, five guys there. That's what you want to see. Run through it one more time. Again, you're going to reroute, get depth, totally take A.J. Green away. So Steelers did a great job of that. It was a clearly like a, a very clear effort to take him away. Again, two catches for 38 yards, one of the worst games of his career against Pittsburgh because Green usually dominates. Um, and, and hats off to Ross Cockrell. He played a fantastic game. Um, you know, I, I would say probably the MVP of that game defensively, uh, maybe of the overall game. You know, There's some other guys that had good performances as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't just him though. It was a lot of the schematics as well to being able to bracket AJ green, take him away, force Andy Dalton to rely on LaFell, uh, Tyler Croft, uh, Tyler Boyd, you know, hit his shutdown to his back, you know, knock him up that big chunk play. Um, there wasn't a perfect game from Cockwell. There was a pass interference, which I know is debatable, but uh, I think overall, um, that's about as good as it gets to shutting down, uh, one of the top, you know, five receivers in the league. In AJ Green. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about this, uh, you can leave that in the comments on the YouTube video, um, which will be you know archived on the page. We're gonna obviously post this on Steelers Depot. That's the main purpose of this. Um, so post it there. It'll go up if you're watching it now. If you if you happen to see the live stream, um, it'll go up in the morning. Um, you know, and you can leave a comment there or on Twitter or however you want to reach me. Um, please feel free to do so. But um, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we're probably going to do the, the live stream like we did last week if you were around last Saturday, uh, where I hang out for a half hour, hour, just kind of go through the game a little bit, you know, just an open chat. If you want to see a play, if you have a question, just want to watch some of the, the coaches film or whatever, um, I think we're going to try to do that on Fridays. Now, I know we did it Saturday last week, but Saturday, not a lot of people around, you know, college football, just living their lives, um, you know, going outside, unlike me. Uh, but I think we're going to try to do that on Fridays. I don't have an exact time yet. Um, it might be around 3-ish, 3, 3.30 maybe. I will uh, definitely try to give some sort of notice on Twitter at least. Um, but that might be kind of what we're going to try to do to make this at least a once a week kind of thing for that aspect, which I thought I had a lot of fun with last time. Hopefully you guys did too. It seemed like the people that were there really enjoyed it and appreciated it. I know I had a lot of fun talking to you guys. So 
Uh, be on the lookout for that, though, hopefully Friday. And, of course, we still always have the Ask Alex Thursday mailbag. Thursday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time for about an hour um, every single Thursday, where if you can't stream it because of whatever, or if you're just not around, you can always uh, just send in a comment uh, on Steelers Depot, and we'll have the chat that way. But thank you guys for watching. Be sure to follow Steelers Depot all week long. Really appreciate it. And, again, we will talk to you soon.